guys, I'm Sai and welcome to Ace Podcast Nation, the home of the Andy Campbell Championship Show. This is episode number 105. The show is available live on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Ace Podcast Nation also your home to many great shows and series featuring top guests, expert analysts and more. So give us a follow on social media. Most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click that bell for notifications so you do not miss a show. Uh, and you can also keep up to date on uh, the guests and shows coming up. And of course, if you want to keep it purely football and no other uh, sport or series, you can follow the at AC Footy Show on uh, all social media and uh, just streamline your experience. And of course, you can listen to this show and every other series we do. Uh, the audio versions are available for download and streaming at uh, your favourite radio and podcast platforms, links to which are all in the description below uh, so we're going to be talking FA Cup tonight which I'm looking forward to for a little bit of a change we'll, we'll be talking a bit of championship as well but uh, just as we wait for those various platforms to uh, to fill up a little bit a big uh, thank you to Black Diamond Sports as ever for all their support around the show they are a, a global sports agency they represent sports stars from around the world for more information you can visit their social media pages and of course, the website links to it are all in the description and in the closing credits at the end of the show. And um, the sponsors for today's show and the Andy Campbell show's death generally is uh, Bespoke Financial. A uh, big thank you to Dan Ross and Bespoke Financial for making it happen and uh, sponsoring and supporting the show. Uh, Darren has actually given away a free will at the moment, 100, worth £140 with any new policy which is taken out. Get your words out. Um, Please check him out. Give him a call. See if there's anything uh, in anything there for you. It's a, a truly amazing offer from a top top brand. Uh, we're very very proud to have uh, partnered up with them, and long may it continue. Um, and we'll have a little ad from them a bit later on in the show. But uh, I urge you all to uh, to check them out. But uh, joining me as ever is uh, the man with the plan, the hostess with the mostess, ex uh, Middlesbrough Cardiff City striker. A true legend of the game. Of course, he is David Jones's favourite son. It is Mr. Andy Campbell. How are you, mate? I'm not bad, mate. Yeah, uh, looking forward to this. This is, uh, I, I, to my memory, I don't think we've done a an FA Cup special. I think we've um, we've mentioned the FA Cup. We must. Have. I don't. I don't know. I don't think we've 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 dedicated a full show to it like we uh, like we are well we, like we are doing tonight. So um, I'm I'm looking forward to it because I was um, I was a little bit nervous about what was going to happen in the FA Cup the weekend. I thought, um, especially what, what, what I witnessed on Friday, what we talked about on Friday on the, on the Championship show and when people were talking about Villa and Liverpool, etc. But um, I, was quite, uh, I was quite impressed for, uh, from certain clubs and I know we're going to dig deep into, uh, into, into certain things, but, um, but the magic's still there for some clubs. So uh, episode 25, we did an FA Cup special Didn't on we? the FA Cup fourth round. Did we? Um, that was one of our earliest right. live shows as well. Saying that though, mate, my, 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 what, we're on 100 and, what are we on, 108? What are we on now? 105. 
105. My memory so doesn't go. My, go my memory doesn't go. Back, doesn't go back that far. Indeed. Uh, yeah, and uh, that was actually the Chris Barker tribute show as well. Ah, how yeah. can I forget that one? Then that was a great show. Really enjoyed that yeah, one. It's too. literally about a, a year ago, almost to the days yeah. week, a year and yeah. week. But um, yeah, so we're going to start with this many other business. I've got uh, some questions that I want to pose to you, and and indeed the the viewers and the listeners. Um, so we're going to talk about Derby in a second. Uh, they there was some reports this week that they cannot pay their wages to their staff and players since Christmas or over Christmas, the money that was due, um, which is incredible in itself for a club of Derby size. Um, also today, Wayne Rooney has been announced as permanent manager and he's retired from football. Um, we'll have a little talk about that as well in a sec. But uh, my question is, is football continuing under lockdown and, and all these various things with without being able to have full grounds and all the different uh, permutations because of COVID, is it putting more pressure on football clubs financially in terms of being able to cover their costs of where, you know, we all know footballers, particularly in the Championship and the Premier League, get paid a lot of money, but the staff and everything, because they haven't got as much money coming in. And is that meaning that we're seeing more clubs, like we talked about Sheffield Wednesday a couple of weeks ago, couldn't pay their... We're having trouble paying their wages. Now you've got Derby. Like Derby and Sheffield Wednesday, they're not, with all due respect to the likes of Macclesfield and some of the others, Barry, who we've seen go down, you know, go under over the last couple of years. Derby County and Sheffield Wednesday are on a whole different level to that. And I'm wondering, and I've wondered this week, is football being on doing more harm than good in terms of long-term health of football clubs? Um, I, I'll start with your point about Macclesfield and Berry about, about those kind of teams and the only thing what's going to save Sheffield Wednesday and Derby County is that they've both been in the Premier League and they can get back to the Premier League because they're both big football clubs with, with huge fan bases and that becomes appealing to somebody and I'm talking about investors here if somebody wanted to buy a football club Macclesfield's not appealing Berry's not appealing but Sheffield Wednesday and Derby County were appealing because of the size of the clubs and that's unfair um, but then to not be able to um, to pay the pay the players um, is 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 wrong. It, of course, it's wrong. You know, it's wrong because um, clubs should should have enough money in their in, in their accounts from the start of the season to the end of the season without having to rely on supporters. Because Derby County could have had the worst season in the world when supporters are here and supporters don't go and watch. So you, you can't always rely on that. Um, but also, side, you remember when uh, uh, Mehmet obviously Mehmet was on the show? Seems like a lifetime ago. Um, at the start of lockdown. And he was talking about um, that um, players deferred money they were going to get yeah. in the long run, but they deferred money. I don't, I don't hear many other clubs deferring or, or, or taking cuts whilst, whilst lockdown's on. That potentially would have saved a lot of heartache. It would have saved and guaranteed them to get paid in the long run. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. Deferring money means nothing to a club because they've got to pay a bigger lump sum at the end of it, so it's probably more harmful than good. You know what I mean? As a, if a player took a wage cut, um, and I know obviously um, Premier League players took uh, a percentage of their wage and put it towards the NHS, that's brilliant, fantastic for for, the, for for what they did. But it still doesn't help football clubs. The Premier League's a different animal because of Sky monies and and everything. The Championship and the top of League One, I look at the Ipswiches, the Sunderlands, the Portsmouth, the big football clubs. They will have big squads, big overheads. Um, I think it's only a matter of time until one of them just. Just, just falls altogether, yeah. and unfortunately, if we're not careful, um, it's going to happen. And um, this money, which, which apparently is there for clubs to 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 fall back on from the Premier League, isn't that what this money is for? For Derby County, for example, to fall back on to the pay the wages. So this should never come out because Derby then dip into it and say we're going to pay the players' wages for the next month or two, which then gives them a little bit of time. Uh, to hopefully potentially find some more money from somewhere else, um, to speak to the players to say, listen, we're struggling a little bit. Can you defer money till next season? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is because players players are going to get paid regardless. Players and contracts are that tight for footballers that they get their money. You know what I mean? That's even if they leave the football club now because the way that the footballers will look at it is the way that um, probably business looks at things that. If players don't get paid, they've breached contract, they can leave. They're still due that money, though, so they're still going to have to get paid if they're at that club or another club. And I think that's unfair as well. You know, There's got to be protection from both sides, but there's got to be a deal. 
from both sides to guarantee that football still carries on. It, it breaks my heart to see players not getting paid because I, I've been in that situation. You, you don't know if you're going to get paid. You don't know if other people in the club are going to get paid. And I mean, I was close. I've, 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 never, I've never hidden away from the fact I had, I had the kit man living with me at Cardiff because he couldn't afford to travel from Bath to, to Cardiff. Um, I was very close to all of the people at the club, um, receptionists, chefs, um, other people who didn't get paid a lot of money and you just feel for everybody because mm. players can afford to live a couple of months because of the way that they're but but they still have a lifestyle most, most can i don't think it's fair to say all can no not all can but i'm, I'm on about i'm on about first, those young players in the yeah i'm one of our first team players first, first team players you know that obviously derby today announced that wayne rooney's full-time manager he's retired from football you know what i mean so it's, He's obviously not too worried about it then, is he? No, but I, I also think it's bad timing as well. You know what I mean? If, if mm. They can't announce one minute a negative and then try and try and just bounce off with a positive. It's such bad timing. That, for me, needs to be a good announcement and done at the right time as well. But going back to your point about... about um, oh, I feel sorry for the little club side. I do believe that, um, that furloughing Cambridge United well, and Hartlepool United and all those kind of teams would probably benefit them more than it would carrying it on. Yeah. So... A couple of interesting comments in the in the uh, chat, which I'm going to refer to because they've kind of fallen with what I was going to say. Ian Curtis says lower league clubs have been hung out to dry, uh, in his opinion, by the FA as crowds are their main source of income, um, and that's what I was going to say. Like below the championship, they they just may as well have been told sort yourself out. Like don't, no one but, cares. Uh, and, but and, I'd probably I'd probably have the championship in on that side because what well, for me you probably could go on. You could go on the average crowds for the season before. That, that your income is based, that, that you get a pot of money and it's based on that season because... Where does money... that money come from? Is the, is the, ah, that's where it well, comes down. The FA never wants to give out money as it is. Yeah, I, I agree, but it's the same as the government. The government never wanted to give money out. And look what they've done. The government have had to give it out because things have gone so desperate. <laughs> Football's getting in, going in the same way. And if, if they want to lose any more clubs, it's just going to be a disaster. It's an absolute mm-hmm. disaster because what they don't want to do is, is be saved by another football club. And if that's a Premier League club, then... England have never gone down that route of having a having a second team in in the football league, and for me that if if Man United had, had a say Berry, because they could have done financially, they would have had a Man United two, and that's not what we wanted. We wanted Berry to stay as Berry. We want Bolton to stay as Bolton. We want Macclesfield to stay as Macclesfield because they have their own fan fan base. They have their own. This is why United went down that route of having FC United because fans weren't happy the way that clubs were getting run, and we don't want to we don't want to go down that route like other countries do. You know what I mean? I look at Holland. Um, Holland's Division Two is full of reserve teams, and yeah. they can't get promoted because of that. And you can only get to a certain level. And I don't see the point in it. You know what I mean? If you're playing for a club, you want to see promotions. You want to see something at the end of it. And it's not for me. You know, I, I, I hope I hope this can sort itself out. I hope I hope it's just a, a little glitch in in Derby County finances, and 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 they can get the uh, the money back. Because for my knowledge, they got taken over not so long ago. So. Yeah, it's worrying, isn't it, from that yeah. point of view. Um, one thing I will just say on the lower league clubs, what frustrates me about that is, um, <clears throat> like I'm talking League Two and down, like those clubs desperately need that money coming in from the crowds. And in my opinion, those stadiums, you know where you've got like the half stadiums and they're, they're, they're so open, it's very easy to have fans in there and have them social distancing because they're not always jam-packed anyway. Mm. And I just feel like... Use common sense and, you know, say to clubs, you have to have certain things in place like social distancing and blah, 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 blah. If you can do that in your stadium, it, like you can't have a blanket ruling in terms of how many fans are allowed in or even a percentage to a certain degree because what Man United can do with 50% um, foot you know, capacity might be different to what, a team in League Two can do with fifty percent capacity, but yeah. the difference in how much it would help would be massive. Do you see yeah. what I mean? It it is, mate. And, like, and one and, might be able to do it safely, and one might not be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, listen, it's it's easy. It's easily to. It's easier to do things um, at a ground where you've got seats to social distance because you you can you can blank out seats. You know what I mean? Whereas people who have standing areas, it's difficult because you can't keep people apart without having stewards and things which then becomes a more of an issue for me it's easy with seats you know what i mean Cardiff city stadium middlesbrough stadium it's easy because you can basically shut off a seat you know what i mean so people can't sit on him if it's not available to sit you know what I mean? it's not available to sit on you can't sit on it so it's it's easy to sort that out whereas it's a little bit more difficult for those who've got um standing areas 
you know what I mean, because of you, you, you can't, you're not going to get your meter rule out, you're not going to get, you know what I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. Yes, well, and I wonder where if, uh, if the bet 32, was it? But um, I wonder if they're happy that Wayne Rooney's retired after forking out all that money. Well, you can look at you can look at the Derby. Uh, you can look at Derby can't afford to pay the players, but they're potentially paying the biggest wage. Mm-hmm. Whoever's paying that money, by the way, Derby County player, they're paying the biggest wage in in the championship. So it's it's it, it doesn't sit right. That, that, and that deal's never been disclosed. So for me, um, we think that Derby County paying their wages. So if they're paying the wages, then that's potentially one of the reasons. Oh, mate, he just chose number thirty-two because he he was thirty-two once. <laughs> he just he just picked a, he just picked a number he just picked a random number. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Um, yeah, it's worrying, mate. I gotta say, and and I I've been thinking about that this week. Like, have is football being on causing more harm than good in various um, ways? I refuse to discuss. That ridiculous story that's been out in the couple, last couple of days about players celebrating by hugging each other. Um, if they bring in a rule which says the players can't hug each other to celebrate, I possibly might stop watching football because uh, that is the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. And I, so, I didn't talk about it, mate. I really can, so, can, can somebody in the, in, the, in the chat then tell me what's the difference between somebody hugging someone from a goal and somebody being touched tight on a corner. So I say, Harry Maguire's marking me on a corner. What's he going to do? He's going to be grabbing hold of me. He's going to be touching me. It's the same thing. But that's by an, oppo- that's by an opposing player, which, which has got to be worse than, than, than my own player who's in my bubble. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. Coming out with comments like that is, you know what I mean? Jose Mourinho said about it. He said, we're getting, it's getting ridiculous now. One minute we can't celebrate because of um, VAR. Now we can't celebrate because of this. We might as well just not have any goals. We might as well just play nil nil every week. Which, you know what I mean? It's it just becomes a little bit little bit laughable. You know that um, if they don't want players to celebrate, then don't have football on for me because it's just you, they can't have, way, they can't mate, have the I cake and eat it. They can't have the cake and eat it. Yeah, like I said to you like, on Monday, mate, about um, you and Craig about uh, Mendy. Like if he if players like him who just continually keep breaking those rules and which are breaking the bubbles and et cetera, et cetera, then ultimately the people who make those rules will eventually say, Right, that's fine. We won't have football on until this is all over. Yeah. Um and I know that seems extreme, but mm-hmm. pe- you know, Mendy's not gonna get much support from people because he's doing it. He's done I worked out he's done it three times in total mm-hmm. because he did it the first time. Then he did it as a group with the Man City first team. Had like a meal, and then he's done it this most recent time. But we, so, you, you, we, we spoke about um, we spoke about Celtic as well. Celtic broke the rules. They went to Dubai. Um, they came back. Loads of people have, have contracted COVID. They drew against Hibernian. They had to play the game. They were forced to play the game basically because they're the ones who who broke the rules. Mm. I, I, if I was a Hibs player, I would have been a little bit cautious, a little bit um, scared about about putting myself in that situation. They got a they got a draw, which is a great result, and it serves Celtic right a little bit. That you know what I mean. I think sometimes you don't always get the the right outcome and and, and the right result, and um, and people trying to prove a point for the for the sake of proving a point. And um, hopefully, people start taking it serious because footballers are in such a privileged position anywhere, but they're even more so. A privileged position because they're still allowed to do the one thing that they want to do. No one else is allowed to watch them live. No one else is is able to do it. You know, listen, I, I still I still want to play football at the level I play at. You know what I mean? Over forties, I'm not allowed to play. I don't think I'll play again this 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 season. So it's it's not fair. We've had some phenomenal comments already. This is why I love doing these shows because we've got not just like a great audience who are like uh, you know who watch the shows and download the shows and and. To be fair, Donna's comment, uh, uh, which was... Uh, about the two-metre distance. If not, yeah, if not, let them celebrate. We'll introduce, to be fair, a few teams. A few teams yeah, are using that week. A few teams are using uh, that week in week out. <laughs> I don't know what press it is. Uh, said, you know, he said, it's not necessarily the congregation of the crowds in the stadium. It's the going to and from, which they obviously clubs can't please that either. Um, which is the issue, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, and Ian Curtis made a great point. He said, um, even lower than you know, League Two and the non league, like Merthyr released all their players, like all their players, and they had to just not bother this year at all because mm-hmm. they need the, the crowds so much. And yeah. it is such a shame 
Um, and this is why, going way back to March of 2020, when everyone thought I was just saying it because I didn't want Liverpool to win the league, this is why FIFA should have brought down a thing which said, right, football's ending, the season's over, we'll start again. So we'll say now, where things are starting to get a bit better and there's vaccination on the horizon, they could be starting the new season now, new year, new season. Things would be a lot safer. You'd have a portion of fans. Teams would have lost as much money. Um, and maybe there wouldn't be so much pressure. Yes, we oh. all love having football. And even though it's not the same, of course, we wanted sport and stuff. But ultimately, when it comes to safety and the health of football clubs in terms of their long term, long, long term financial future, I still believe that the thing to do was to end the season and have a break from football. Yeah, well, listen, Sam, I'm not, I'm no politician. I'm no big fan of politics, but um, we're currently now in in lockdown three. I, I've not had lockdown one and two. Never mind lockdown three. So, if they'd have done lockdown properly, we could have had football a long time ago. If we'd have just locked down properly and everyone stuck to the rules. So, for me, there's a, there's a there's a lot of blame, which 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 is which has put a diff certain people, individuals, but I think um, I think a lot more people need to take responsibility of what's going on. Do you know, speaking of lockdown and rules, I think we should have a rule that there's no Liverpool fans in the chat. <laughs> lock, lock, them, lock them out. Lock them out. Um, right. Um, transfer window or lack of. Uh, yeah. Nothing's changed. Bizarre, Nothing, nothing's it's changed since last Friday. Um, we, we, spoke, we spoke about players who we were... Who we were um, who we were hoping we were going to sign, who um, who we thought would enhance teams, who we who we were impressed with who signed. I, aside, listen, I, I'm not a big fan of, of of transfer windows, and and what I don't get from certain clubs and from most clubs is they leave it to the last five seconds to get a deal done. What's the point? Because football's football's not football hasn't stopped. Football's still happening. So if you sign the player three weeks ago, he plays straight away. If you sign him in two weeks' time, then he can't play. For four weeks, five weeks. What's the point to sign him and play him? Yeah. What's the, what, what are you waiting for? It's bizarre, are, you, are, you, are you waiting to make that final decision? If you're keen on him, go and sign him. Put it to bed. Get the deal done before anyone else can get involved and steal him last minute. Because I, I just, I just don't understand it. I really don't. I mean, there's been a couple of little moves, like Snodgrass has gone to West Brom, um, which I know uh, Gaz who watches wasn't particularly happy about. Uh, Andy lonergan has gone to West Brom. Uh, mm. But there's nothing really big. Uh, Gavin White, I did want to touch on very quickly. Uh, he's gone on loan to somewhere where I forgot. Hull, Hull City. I don't. Um, I don't get it. I, I don't. Think that's I, ridiculous, I, right? We've talked about Cardiff maybe lacking width and not having any wingers because they didn't replace Mendes Lang, and now they've gone and sold another one or got rid of another the, one. Uh, listen, there's uh, no listen, plan. Money. Money's obviously an issue. They're trying to free up money to give to bring in a player. Yeah, they, they, you know what I mean? So they've, they've 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 got to go and do it, which I which I I, I do totally, um, which I totally understand. But don't get rid of one of your for me one of your one of your outlets, one of your better attacking players who's going to create something. You know what I mean? Gavin, play, Gavin hasn't been, Gavin's not been given an opportunity. He needs games, but if he needs games, give him games. Give him an opportunity. He's never been given a chance when he played last year for me. He was one of the. He was one of the bright sparks. He when he got the ball, he's he's, he's electric. He makes something happen on his day. He's a winger. He's he's, he's unpredictable. Um, every time he plays for Ireland, he doesn't let him down. He gets he he, he gets gets good ratings. He gets good feedback. But it's the same old 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 story. If how can you play well if you sat on your backside? It's unbelievable. But. For me, mate, just very quickly on Cardiff because we we'll, we are going to touch on some Cardiff stuff later. Um, I just feel like there's no plan there. Like they are the two signings they've been linked with today and yesterday. Um, so the right back on loan, finally a right back uh, on loan from I think it's Arsenal. He's very highly rated. Yeah. But like I feel like we kind of need proven, or at least like um, you know like proven in the championship. Uh, we've got some good young players. We need something that's going to come in, hit the ground running. Is it loan young right back from Arsenal? Gonna, gonna do that. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. But it's a yeah. risk. He's a league like... one striker. Yes, he scored thirteen in fifteen games. Unbelievable record. Mm. But he's kind of up a level. He's only twenty one. There's no guarantee that he's gonna hit. You know, he's gonna come and do that. Yeah. Um, and I and think that's that's, that's, that's Ivan Tony's fault because because Ivan Tony's done it. 
everyone else can do it. And it doesn't always work out like that. You know, you look at you look at some other players who've come up from League One and 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 the, the listen. He's not walking in if he does if he does sign. By the way, he's not walking into a club. With not with no expectations, he's walking into a club with high pressures. You know what I mean? I've been there when um, a, a, a lesser level with Cardiff. You know that they, yes, they had the aspirations. Yes, they were they were paying good money. But now that they're a step away from the Premier League, they're an ex Premier League club. You know what I mean? There's expectations. You came in with a big reputation, mate, didn't you? Yeah, like, yeah. And I remember when you signed for, for Cardiff. I was so excited. Premier League striker, young, fast. Like everyone was so excited. I'm, I'm blushing. Uh, I'm blushing. Yeah, sorry, it wasn't Arsenal. <laughs> right back in the Villa, I got it. I got that mixed up. I'm blushing. Right back in the But um, one championship club which has made a for now, I think, in my opinion, is a very, very good sign into a very good squad already. But they have been a bit him, Mrs. Blackburn. They've signed an uh, 18 year old defender from Everton, yeah. uh, Jared Braithwaite. Uh, yeah, Brian, I say that. Sorry. He's, he's played, yeah, for, the, he's played for the first team before. Very, yeah. very good. Yeah, he's played for the first time. I watched him in the in the, in the Carling Cup, and I thought he was very good. And the only thing was holding holding him back and his development back, back is is some of the players that, that is keeping him out. You know that he's got um, he's he's versatile. He can play at both fullbacks. He can play a little bit further up. Um, and when you've got some of the same as Seamus Coleman and other fullbacks at Everton, it's, it's going to hold you back a little bit. So for him, he has to go out the comeback in, and that's the this. that's the thing. This this yeah. comment right here. Hmm. Cardiff need players, and I tell you one thing: if I had a, a young right back in the Premier League in Villa or where anyone else, a young player, and Cardiff City came in and said, "Can we have him on loan?" I would say no, simply because of the way they treated uh, their loan players over the years. But like the way they treated Benkovic was disgusting. Well, he's he's gone. He's signed for someone else, he's hasn't he? he? No, he's gone. He no, he's left. He's gone. Uh, he's, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone on loan again to somebody else. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. He went back and then he went, yeah. but he played. Tw- he played like twenty minutes the other day, and that, and that was. And he had a mare because he hasn't played. Um, and I hope that he goes wherever, and he has a phenomenal end to the season. And I hope that he just like completely tears it up and makes, whether it's Cardiff or Harris, whoever you believe to be at fault. Now you just think he's going to make him look stupid because he was very good last year for Bristol. So. Yeah, uh, well, let's 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 hope not. Let's hope the signings. But what what are we now? We're fifteenth, so we're um, we haven't got many we haven't got many days left. By the way, you know, what I mean, they're running out of days. Indeed, I, I'm trying to think, trying to find where he's gone. Um, I think he went. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure he went to Belgium, but I might I might have just made that up. I can't see it, but uh, I didn't need a quick look. Um, so we'll come back. to... Cardiff will come back to the championship at the end of the show. We're uh, going to have a little chat about the FA Cup. Obviously, there's so many games. We're not going to go through game by game. We're going to take it in terms to pick some of our, or just pick a game. We're going to have a chat about it. And then we'll give a two up and two are down. And then we'll finish off with some other bits and pieces. Um, you go first, mate. What's your first uh, first FA Cup third round game that caught your eye? Um, well, the first one that caught me I was, was probably Friday, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave, leave that one to a little bit later on. I watched um, on Saturday morning. I watched Charlie against Derby. Um, the first ever time I watched a non-league side against a, um, a full-time side when the non-league sides expected to beat the the full-time side, which yeah, was just unbelievable. Nice. Obviously, it was Derby's kids. Um, I thought they did okay. They probably could have taken the league before before Charlie scored. Uh, but once uh, Charlie scored for me, they were. They were getting bullied all over the park. They were they were getting dominated in set pieces. They didn't really get the game going, and and it just showed me showed me side. It showed the difference. You know, what I mean, the comment there about 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 a man's game, the difference between an under 18s under twenty third, under twenty threes team to a men's team is huge. So when those derby players say, "I'm not going on loan to a to a non league football team," you go to that you go to that non league football team, gain experience because they're better than you, basically. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I felt for that. I felt for those kids because I felt like they were in an impossible situation because if they'd won, it was like, well, they were, non, they were playing a non-league team anyway. But they, yeah, they were on a hide into nothing. They, they did okay from what I saw. Um, it, but the difference between, like you say, even lower league men's football to under 23s or youth football is massive, massive. Mm. Listen, Sai, when I when I was managed when I was manager at non league when I was manager non league non league football, I, I would have, I would have set my team out to in the first ten minutes to upset some of those players. 
to get in the faces of those young boys and really, really make it difficult for them. Some of the things I'd have said wouldn't have been very nice. Some of the things I'd have expected the players to do would have been horrible. But my football club's there to win a game. That, 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 that game for Charlie would have been worth about a million pounds. You know what I mean? So that, to the football club, will sort them out budget-wise for the next year. So what about teams not being able to afford money and, and afford things this year? They've just made their budget and they've made probably the, the money that they've lost this season or this year due to COVID straight away. And they've got another game, which they could yeah. potentially win. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, that's great for, for Chorley. I hope... Um, I haven't actually... I haven't seen... We're going to talk about the draw in a minute. I haven't actually seen the draw. I obviously oh. know one... There's one game I know, which is uh, the Liverpool-Man United game, which obviously was plastered everywhere. But I haven't seen... Well, Charlie, yeah. you, Charlie, you're playing. Oh, Charlie, playing next against Wolves. So, I'm, oh, not, saying, I'm not saying they're going. I'm not saying they're going to win. They're going to beat them, but they'll, they're going to get another TV game out of it, which is more money, which is which is what they what they do it for. Do you think that is that on TV? The Wolves game. Ah, oh, someone will give it to them. Yeah, you know, I think they're on BT. They're on BT on Saturday. There's 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 BT. There's BBC. There's at the minute. There's loads. There's enough. They'll, they should definitely get the TV game. Definitely. Yeah, you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? I mean, even if they was to do like the FA sometimes show them on their website, don't they? Yeah. The, um, yeah. the games. Um, so next game, we'll have a little chat about. Uh, I was, I mean, like, I'm in an iron about which which ones I want to discuss because there's a few I've got something to say about. Um, I think we'll go with. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with uh, Wickham beating uh, Preston North End four one. Um, there's an all all championship affair, obviously. Uh, Preston have been banging for him. Some changes obviously made. Joe Jacobson again playing a, a pivotal role. He's having a phenomenal season. Um, if I was picking my team of the year now, he'd be in it. I got to say, um, he's had a fantastic season in what's been a very difficult period for his club. Yeah. Um, there were some changes. Wickham played a very strong lineup though, um, particularly. The core of it, I felt, was very. You know, there were some regular names in there who play in the championship. Is that important? Is that important, though, Si? Is that important for continuation? Yeah, is that to, important? Because um, co listen, Wickham need to win next Saturday. So if they go and get battered on last Saturday before they play tomorrow, you know what I mean? It, it, it's gonna it's gonna hit their confidence negative. You know what I mean? Negatively. So they need to 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 win as many games as they can this season. If that's FA Cup and going on a good run. Any game can 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 change your your fortune, change your confidence level. So for me, Gareth picked a team which for me was better than the Preston team, and it showed because they were two up in, in next to no time as well. Which you can't give, you can't afford to give any team a, a head start. But when you go two 0 down, three 0 down, three one four one, it's difficult. Difficult. Yeah, Preston made a lot of changes. Um, yeah. I was very. That's one thing which is all I always interests me. I guess is when people say a cup run can change the momentum of the season, which of course it can. But does it if you make eleven changes and have a cup run? So your cup team is completely different to your league team anyway. So those players aren't getting that momentum. Yes, you get a bit of a good feeling around the club. But if it's eleven different players playing in the league and cup, you don't really get the same effect, do you? Uh, well, the game I'm going to talk about next has has that point written all over it. And, um, and which what game are you going to talk about, mate? Um, so I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk about the Crawley against Leeds United game. So Leeds obviously made yeah. a, a host number of changes. So a team which Bielsa thought was going to win the game, which so did I on paper. I still thought there was a strong enough team. So those those changes which he made were good enough for the team. They're Premier League footballers. They got shown how to play football. They got shown how to win a football match. They got shown up on a Sunday afternoon. Massively, so none of those players surely are going to be in Bielsa's plans this year to play in the Premier League. Because how can he trust any of those players after they perform so poorly against a against a side from a lower division? You know what I mean? They they let themselves down. They didn't look like they, they had the fight. It didn't look like they had the sharpness. The you know what I mean? So it's no wonder managers in the Premier League look like they don't make many changes because it's tried and tested side. You know what I mean? That that, that sometimes you think, well, why isn't Benkovic playing? Well. Maybe it's because the manager's scared that he's not fit. You know, maybe it's, you know because you look at the changes they made, and I'm, I'm just using one player as, as an example there. Because when you put ten or eleven in, and one of them's not sharp, then seven or eight aren't sharp, and then all of a sudden you you lose the game heavily because getting B three 0 in an FA Cup tie is absolutely terrible, just disastrous. Because Leeds, Leeds, Leeds United aren't going to go down this year. You know what I mean? They've started off so well, they're not going to go down with with the way that the league's panning out. This was an opportunity to potentially 
have a cup run. You know what I mean? You're playing a lesser side away from home. You might get a home home draw next time against a, another lesser side. And by the time you know it, you're in the fourth round, fifth round, quarter final at Wembley. It's just for me, yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark, right? Yeah, I thought that. I thought, I thought, I thought our lady, our lady followers might be impressed with that one. Um, I, I can't fault him, mate. He's yeah. um, he's living the dream, mate. At the end of the day, he, um, he's not. He's a decent footballer as well, which is. You know, oh, listen, when I when I first uh, when I first saw him on, um, uh, he was on the the, the the charity game, isn't he, for for, yeah. for England against the rest of the world. And uh, the first time I seen him, what, what, when Robbie, Robbie Williams did it, I was I was mm-hmm. I was in awe. I just couldn't believe how good he was playing left wing back, driving up and down, did really good feet, look fit, look looked apart. I thought he could be a player. You know what I mean? And fair play to him. You know he's living the dream. And to play in the FA Cup is listen. The FA Cup was always good for me. Good as a player. Good as a fan. Um, loved it as a manager. It was just one of those things that I just don't get why people don't really buy into it. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I would have loved to be. People in, think it's an publicity. Be playing. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I do, it's yeah. Not, I don't think it is with him. I think because he's no, been on trial there for ages. Like, yeah. he's in that spot and good for him. Um, I'd love to see him play really well for them and get like a big, one big move just to like a championship club or something. Just to kind of, because he's 30 now. So he, you know, he hasn't got like a, a long time to go and, you know, pan out, uh, do a Jamie Vardy as such. Um, one thing, last thing I'll say on the Leeds game, it, this isn't like, a, you know, Crawley battles to a 1-0 victory or, you know, a last minute goal to make it 2-1. Leeds, Leeds were outplayed for large portions of this game in every aspect of football. Yeah. Um, and if I was Bielsa, you said Leeds won't go down because of the start they've made. If I was Bielsa, I'd be worried because their form in the last uh, couple of weeks is is not very good. Um, but not just that it's not very good. They've only got one way of playing, which we discussed last year in the Championship. When they've had a wobble, they, they, they do struggle because they've only got this one way of playing. And when teams find a way to play against it, it makes it very, very easy for the other team to, to, to do it. Yeah. Um, Leeds is uh, on form. Uh, uh, let's have a look. So they've last six matches, lost three. Oh, they've well, they've done marginally better than what I thought they had. They'd won one, three, and lost three in the league, yeah. Um, which is actually at 50 50, I suppose. Yeah. On that form, they would stay up. Um, so it is a bit better than what I thought it was. But when I because I've seen a couple of those losses, I thought they had lost them, like they weren't doing really well, but um. Yeah, they uh, against. I think it was a uh, Man United. Maybe I watched. When they yeah, Man United all over the place. They yeah, all over the place. And I just yeah. thought, if you play like this throughout the season, you're gonna you're gonna go down. But I, so whilst I agree with you, I think they will stay up. I don't think that they're necessarily. It's not like a given. Do you know what I mean? Like if they have a bad run, which they, they kind could. of listen, so yeah, and and you know what I mean. And I think my point is that. Uh, why? Why you? Why don't don't make so many changes? Don't don't disrespect the FA Cup. I looked at um, two more games: Chelsea against Morecambe. I watched um, Marine against Tottenham. I watched both put unbelievably strong sides out. You know what I mean? Tottenham didn't need to put the side that they put out. You know what I mean? They had international players from goalkeeper through all the way through. Um, Chelsea had more or less the best side out, which just shows how seriously Frank was taking it. Just shows how seriously Jose Mourinho was taking it because Mourinho just won um, the semi final against Brentford couple of days before so he's got already a cup final place um and he wants another one and that's just the the mentality of these these top managers and and frank wants to win the fa cup as a manager like he did as a, as a player and, and do you know what i can't fault him because it's all about winning trophies it's all about being selfish because players want to play regardless of if if the odd, odd player might need a rest that's that's evident but do 11 players need a rest yeah it's what a leads goalkeeper is uh, he does look uh well he makes a lot of mistakes um, which is also a worry. Um, he's better with his feet. He's better with his feet than he is with his hands. Yeah. My uh, my next game, mate, is uh, Newport County versus da- uh, Brighton Hove Albion. Uh, really, really enjoyable game that went to penalties. Um, enjoyed watching uh, our neighbours, the Newport. Uh, they got a, it was a bizarre game because Brighton scored in the 90th minute. And then Newport scored in the ninety sixth minute to equalise, yeah. uh, and then it went to penalties, which Brighton Brighton's keeper <laughs> made four penalty saves as uh, they beat Bright, uh, beat Newport four three on the penalties. Um, that's a goalkeeper right? who really turned up uh, at the weekend. It was just an enjoyable game, even the the nil nil portion of it, which was predominantly the whole game. 
uh, I just thought it was relatively enjoyable. But obviously, the last portion of it was very, very exciting. Felt a bit sorry for Newport. After they got that equaliser, I thought they would go on to win it, I've got to say. Yeah, I listen, Newport, notoriously over the last couple of years, have had some really good cup runs. And I think when it gets to penalties, to, and to be fair, penalties on both sides weren't weren't fantastic. You know, that uh, the amount of goalkeepers, the goalkeepers on both sides were, for me, the heroes. So I think it's um, a fantastic achievement by both. And, um, you know, I mean, Steele, obviously, it was in goal for... Um, for Brighton, you know what I mean, and uh, Luke Steele. Um, and to be fair, you can't you can't fault them, but you can't afford new. You can't you can't fault Newport that they're taking a, a Premier League side. Yes, people can say down the bottom of the bottom of the table, but they play football the right way. They've they've had a they've had a tough season this season, but he's still put a strong side out, and they, and, they, and they took them all the way. And you know what I mean, they, they should be very proud of themselves. Yeah, some interesting comments here. Uh, Matthew there says, when when uh, Cardiff beat Leeds in the FA Cup in that famous game, Leeds went on a spiral, sharpish, um, because they were top of the Premier League at that point. It wasn't long after that that they got relegated. So, uh, you know, a, a bad result in the Cup can cause problems. Yeah. Um, and like you say, Newport have been very good recently, and that, I was impressed with them. Uh, as I have been over the last couple of years, I feel like they, they, um, they were building... They're building a good little system. They, their youth academies are very good, um, and they're building building stuff the right way. Um, and that goes way back to when Justin Edinburgh was in charge. There, he did a, a great job in in putting those building blocks in place to to, to get things done. Um, a couple of little comments here. GD Parry says uh, Lampard needs the cup because uh, doesn't look like they're going to be in the title race, and his job could depend on that. Do you know, mate? Is if they don't have an FA Cup yeah. run, I think uh, I think he'd take it though. I'll be honest though. I think I think he would take it because it's a, it's a huge scalp. It's a it's a it's a huge trophy to win. He knows it more than anybody what it takes to win the FA Cup. He's been there. He's he's wore the t-shirt. It's a it's a prestigious cup from from his point of view from his career, and um, he'll take pride in 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 trying to get Chelsea to um to win as many games as I can. You know what I mean? Because he put a he as I say he put the he put a very strong side out. Um, and it was and it was evident that, that he went for it, and they've got the rewards by by the next the draw. They're at home to Luton Town, so he'll keep putting the strong side out, and he'll, he'll he'll keep trying to win it because what we're in the last six, last sixteen now. You know what I mean? The win there, they're in the win the last eight. It's you know what I mean? It's 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 doggy dog on there. Spot on. Uh, Leslie also said about the Leeds keeper, the one that they played at the weekend wasn't their number one. Um, I think he made a mistake, but in fairness, their number one keeper makes a lot of mistakes as well. But he does keep him in. Uh, he does keep him in check as well. Yeah. So it gets his gas. Uh, says he's still fuming uh, because West Ham sold Snodgrass. Yeah, not. Uh, yeah, listen, you know, we spoke, haven't we? That um, clubs make these decisions, and um, West Bromwich Albion have, have, have they've got a bargain. To be fair, they've got a very good player for. Um, for I'm guessing not a lot of money uh, on a good deal. Uh, but on a longer contract, and the players looked after himself, which you can't fault. Yeah. What's uh, the next game you want to talk about, mate? Um, I'd like to talk about Sheffield United because Chris Wilder's um, had a bit of a bit of a rough time. Um, he's uh, he's been under a lot of pressure, uh, and then we're talking about confidence and we're talking about results. But Chris Wilder put his strong side out against Bristol Rovers. They won three two. What happens? They play Newcastle through the week. They win one nil. Two wins out of two. Things are little, looking a little bit brighter, a little bit better. Listen, it'll take a huge achievement and a huge run of games for them to stay up. But all I can do is win as many games as I can. And, you know what I mean? If that starts against Bristol Rovers and that starts and changes your fortune, then so be it. Because Chris Wilder probably didn't, doesn't see the FA Cup as an importance, but he sees winning football matches in importance. And, you know what I mean? The, the, the way that game flowed, Sheffield United took the lead, Bristol Rovers equalised, Sheffield United went ahead, Bristol Rovers equalised, Sheffield United went ahead again. And, just a proper FA Cup tie and, and the game I'd, I'd have loved to see it on TV, but watching the highlights, it was it was evident that both teams wanted to win the game. They had, they had passion, both of them. The players cared about it. They both wanted to win. Um, and then all of a sudden, they go, to the, they go to the Premier League game with confidence after winning 3-2 away from home in the FA Cup and they beat Newcastle 1-0. So, um, it shows how important side the FA Cup is. You said about teams going on runs after winning games in the FA Cup and that happened for Chrissy Wilder in the side at Sheffield United. Yeah, spot on, mate. Spot on, indeed. Uh, Gaz, there, so he said we uh, we only just got past Stockport, Stockport uh, 
lads could have done with Snoddy versus them because uh, West Ham beat uh, Stockport one 0 was it? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see much much of the game because it was on. Uh, it was on Monday night. But I seen. Uh, I seen the highlights. I know that um, West Ham scored late off a corner. Mm. On a set piece. So it was. Uh, listen, it's all about getting through, getting through the next round, and and seeing and seeing how far you can go. And um, obviously, uh, who did West Ham get? West Ham played Doncaster Rovers in the next round. So it's a. Uh, it's worth the worth the effort and worth the struggle of getting over getting over the line, so to speak, to beat Stockport County to get a decent home draw in the in the next round. Indeed, mate. All right, pick uh, one more game each then. Um, I'm going to go. Ooh, I'm going to go Arsenal to Arsenal Newcastle, and uh, the reason I'm going to go Arsenal Newcastle is how Newcastle United didn't win that game is beyond me. Um, <laughs> if they had a decent centre forward, I, 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 no, that sounds that's that's really wrong. That's disrespectful. They've got decent centre forwards, and they've got they've got quite a few. Um, but Andy Carroll had such a an unlucky afternoon evening that if he'd have still been at, at the Emirates Stadium now, he still wouldn't have scored because every time he had a shot, the goalkeeper just saved it with with, with either his legs, his his body, people on the line. He on any other given day that he'd have scored two, three, 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 three goals, and I, I felt really sorry for him because you could see the anguish on his face and and the way that Newcastle defended, the way that he attacked in numbers, they broke away. Steve Bruce went there with a game plan. He went there with a really strong side, and and um, because obviously being in the North East myself, I, I, I listened to all the Newcastle fans being very negative towards Steve Bruce after they got beat against Sheffield United. But I think they forgot about five days before when they when they took Arsenal really close and should have beaten them, but they didn't. So it, it creates a, a negative result. Players will be tired from extra time against a, a very good side who who keep the ball, so you're chasing the ball around. But for me, Newcastle were the best side in the FA Cup in that day, but they just didn't get the result that they. Probably the performance deserved and the chances the creator deserved, but you can't if you don't score chances, you're never going to win a football match. Unfortunately, it would have been a very different week for uh, for Newcastle if they'd won those two games. Yeah. Um, Cage just put a really interesting uh, question to us about uh, FA Cup semi finals. But what I'll do is there's a couple of questions at the start of the show which I'm going to come back to at the end. So we'll come back to all the questions at the end of uh, end of the show uh, if that's okay. Um, and the last game I want to talk about. Is uh, Blackpool two West Brom two? Yeah, uh, Blackpool winning on penalties. West Brom have problems. Um, I s- don't agree with them sacking. Uh, what's his head? Forgotten his name. Bilic. Slaven Bilic. Um, I, however, I am almost glad that they did. If Cardiff pick him up, if Neil Harris was to leave, so I can hold hope. Probably more likely to get. It. Russell Slade, but you know, <laughs> um, Blackpool, great mate. Really, it was. I really enjoyed when Blackpool were in back in the day when they in the, got to the Premier League. I enjoyed watching them every week in, week out, and um, they played with that same excitement and enthusiasm all the way through this game, and it was mm. so refreshing. Yeah. Maxwell and goal has just had the, the the day that players dream of as kids. Mm kids dream of playing, you know, saving penalties. And Maxwell and uh, his teammate both had COVID in the run-up to Christmas. Um, and the cup tie was his first game back after missing a couple of the league games. So to come in, probably from not doing a great deal of training with the team and perform the way he did is, is phenomenal and a great result for Blackpool. Yeah, well, this is this was probably... If it wasn't for the Crawley game, this would have been my upset of the week uh, weekend because... Um, West Brom's side on paper is obviously not as strong as everybody, everybody, everybody would like in the Premier League, but they've still got a, a very good, very good squad of players and um, and, and 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 staff etc. So, whatever team Sam would have put out on the, over the weekend, uh, you would have expected them to win. But Blackpool were always ahead in the game. You know, what I mean, West Brom were always chasing Blackpool ahead. West Brom equalised. Blackpool ahead again. West Brom equalised with a penalty last few minutes. Takes them, you know, what I mean, into extra time and. And then obviously nothing happens in extra time, so penalties take over. And listen, fair play to the goalkeeper. You know what I mean? That when people say there's no pressure on goalkeeper, I, mm. I disagree. I disagree I because if they don't, if they don't save any, then your team doesn't win. You know what I mean? So the yeah. it's it, the, the pressure on goalkeepers just is on players. You know what I mean? That players aren't expected to take penalty uh, score penalties for me because goalkeepers now they're so skilled in their areas. You know what I mean? Because it's like saying that that, that Maxwell's lucky at what he did at the weekend. That's not luck, by the way. Goalkeepers treating really hard to save those penalties. So all the work that he's put in during, on the training ground over the course of his career has flourished on that afternoon. So all the work that he's put in and all the dedication, all the hours on the training ground in games has all come and it's and and made his, his dream come true in one afternoon. So you know what I mean? So 
when I hear people being disrespectful about goalkeepers that there's no pressure and it doesn't matter if they don't save any, you tell Chris Maxwell that, you know, because he's yeah, deserved so. his day. He's he's deserved his day in the history books, and and hopefully, hopefully, he can do it again. Mate, this result for Blackpool could be really vital to their season. So they're six points outside the playoffs in 13th, but they're also six points above the relegation zone. So like their, their league season could literally go either way with a couple of losses or a couple of wins. Yeah. So a cup run could be so uh, invigorating to that squad. Mm. To, it could change their season, mate, particularly yeah. when you've got to beat a Premier League team. You yeah. know, that's, um, that's massive. And then they go, and then they, and listen, Sai, and the, the big West Bromwich Albion, and, and next round they go and get a trip to uh, Brighton or Albion. So they go and get a nice, another trip to the seaside, but a different seaside. But they, they play on a good stadium, nice pitch against a team who's going to try and pass the ball around and play the right way. So they listen, they've got a chance. They've got, they've got a great opportunity to, to, to upset another Premier League side. Leslie makes a phenomenal point there. He says, really, they shouldn't save a shot from the penalty spot. Like no, strikers should be he's, good enough he's, to score every time, shouldn't they? No, I disagree. You see, uh, no, I disagree because because then as a football player can't score from twelve yards with no defenders in his way. Yeah, but it's it's not an open goal, is it? The, go, the goalkeeper stood there. It's not an open goal, but the goals are massive. Yeah, no, a but footballer, if, professional footballer should be able to score from there. What, I've only got one leg, and I'd fancy myself to score from twelve yards. Yeah, what for every single time you shot, hundred percent. Well, I'm special, so I. I no, I'm not. You know, maybe use I, me as an example. I just think, I just think it's disrespectful of goalkeepers because not. No, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm rubbish at penalties, by the way. But if I put the goal, if I put the ball left and the goalkeeper goes right, which is the same way, by the way, I'm going the opposite, and then he's got he's got a good chance to save it, depending on how much power I put in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not. I just think I just think it's just disrespectful sometimes to goalkeepers and disrespectful of Chris Maxwell because he works hard to I look oh, at I look at Jordan Pickford, you know what I mean? People study where people put penalties because of yeah. this thing. So it's Yeah, I I agree with you. I'm not saying it's a like an open goal, but I just believe that um a professional footballer nine times out of ten should be able to score a penalty with no problem. But bear in mind keepers can't move, they can't come off their line, like it's all about holding your nerve, isn't it? And sending them along. <laughs> Leslie's, <laughs> Leslie's comment in the, in the chat there is just... If a, if a snooker player can get that ball in that tiny pocket, why can, can, uh, cannot a player hit top corner? I mean, and look at those goals. They are massive. When you look like, you know, at them like in front of you, 12 yards out, I believe that nine times out of ten, a professional footballer should score. However... There's so many things that come into it, whether how good the keeper is, how much research the keeper's done, luck, you know, if it hits the post, the crossbar, whatever it may be, send the keeper the wrong way, different styles of penalties. There's so many variables to it, of course. Hmm. But I thought oh, should always be able but to. Then, but then you could say that every free header, um, in this, every free header in the, from the penalty spot to the six-yard box should score from a, from a corner. Cause... You should hit the target for a free header. But it should score though because they're closer in. Yeah, but heading's different skill, isn't it? It is not for certain people because Harry Maguire can head it probably better than he can kick it. Well, yeah, but I, I did say specifically professional footballers and strikers. Like I was specific to strikers as opposed to like uh, Harry Maguire, who, you know, Harry Maguire being the world class defender that he is, much better than Virgil who's, van Dijk. Um, who's he's the... gonna score penalties all the time, isn't he? Off the top of your head, now who's the best penalty taker you've 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 come across? Whatever. Yeah. Um, did I ever tell you the, the story about when I took a penalty on my debut? Yeah, for, you did actually. Too. Yeah, Jeez. you did. A cocky, I'm going. Uh, I'm going. Guys. I'm going. Uh, Dennis Irwin. Yeah, I was going to say Dennis Irwin. Steve Bruce was a good penalty taker, also. Yeah, Steve was. Decent, um, yeah. yeah, Dennis Irwin is the one that I always no. think of. No, Gary, Alexa Gary Alexander. Graham Alexander. Graham Alexander. Gary. Yeah, Graham. Graham Gary, Gary. Ga Gary's brother. Or Matt Letizia. Matt Letizia never missed a penalty. I think he missed one, I think. I think he missed he one. I thought he'd think... never missed. Dennis sure Irwin is the one that always, I always think Dennis Irwin is the um, the penalty taker. Like, for Steve Brooks, for, you know, the, the kind of build he was and the kind of defender he was, people always don't think necessarily of him you know, being the technical, skillful player. But, he but was they, they, had, uh, they, they had, uh, they had a, an array of people who could take him, Cantona, um, Mark Hughes, Peter Whittenham, 
quality yeah, penalty. Yeah, there's quite yeah. It's quite, listen, it's, it's a skill. Fine. It's uh, Stuart it's Pierce. A, Stuart, I love Pierce. That. Stuart Pierce missed some big penalties at vital, like important times. Exactly. There's, there's my point. Pressure. There's my point. It's not sent forward though. It doesn't matter. A, a, a free kick and a penalty is a skilled thing to do. It's not a it's not a centre forward's but, job. But my point is, a professional centre forward from twelve yards should be able to hit a top corner or a bottom corner wherever he wants to put that football. Yeah, Second. yeah, he could hit. Yeah, he could hit. He could hit it there. But but the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper could save it. Well, of course, as, as I said, there was there's many variables. Um, Southgate, Ronaldo doesn't miss yeah. many. Left. <laughs> Ga- Gareth. Never no. Gareth's not a specialist. <laughs> yeah, Gareth's up. Chris <laughs> yeah. Waddle is good. Hey, he's a, Gareth's a top blog, by the way. One of my teammates in Middlesbrough, obviously, and uh, met him met him a few times since I left. Now England manager, but yeah, not a, he's not a penalty player. Right, it's eight o'clock. Uh, tell me a couple of the draw, a couple of the games that stood out for you from the draw. Um, Cheltenham against Man City I think it's a, a wonderful opportunity for Cheltenham it's obviously such a shame there's not going to be no fans because these are the games which fans want to, uh, are never going to get football clubs like that to see um, Man United Liverpool obviously is a, a tie which is great on paper but I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be as good live than it than it looks on, on paper because I think the, the, the teams won't be as strong I believe but maybe it's a, yeah. I think it's the FA Cup will be more exciting than the league game I think yeah. the league game yeah, yeah. will be nil nil boring yeah no one will want to lose yeah um Charlie against Wolves I know I spoke about Charlie a little bit um and I think it's an opportunity for them to um to play against Wolves and it'll be interesting what kind of team Wolves put out because Wolves have got an opportunity like any other Premier League side and top championship side to go and progress in this cup uh Wickham against Spurs we spoke about Wickham Wickham putting a strong side out um Jose won't want to um, weaken his side too much because Gareth Ainsworth will, will enjoy pitting his wits up against a, a Premier League side. Um, a Plymouth Argyle got a good result against Huddersfield to get a reward with a, a trip to Sheffield United. Uh, it's a good one, mate. Um, Chelsea versus Luton. That's a good yeah. one, man. Quite looking yeah. forward to it. It's such a shame that the um, there'd be no fans there, but like would have been tasty. Yeah. And also, obviously, if Cardiff had got past Nottingham Forest, they'd have been away to Swansea. Yeah. Which would have been a it would have been a tasty one. Uh, one thing I don't get, I don't get why they've drawn the next round. It's ridiculous. Isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. I don't like that. It's, I, I, I don't like that because I don't like like um, Fulham or Burnley v Bournemouth or Crawley. I just it, too many variables and too many opportunities to think. Oh, we're going to play. It, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. And you could, I know uh, years ago when you've got draws. I know you have, we're not we're not doing draws in the FA Cup anymore now. But that that. That draw could still be the same in, in ten days' time because the draw just keeps carrying on. So it's just for me, just draw it again straight after on the Monday. It doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> just draw it. Whole... <laughs> draw it again. Just keep drawing it. Yeah, just draw the whole thing all at once at the start of the season. It's be fine. Um, <laughs> you, you might as well, sir. You might. You might as well yeah, know. You might as well know enough. which 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 half of the draw you're on exactly. If you're going to do that, right? We're going to do uh, two ups and two downs for the FA Cup. What's your first up, mate? Um uh, my first up is Aston Villa's um kids and youth team. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. Oh, I watched the the second half um against Liverpool and uh, they didn't get out their own half. But you know what? They didn't stop trying. They didn't give up. They didn't, you know, I mean every single one of those players went down with cramp and uh, the young center forward who scored the goal. Do you know what? I I I, I was just you I, see, I, um, I felt like a proud dad. I just every time he was running around I just felt I just felt I was running like well enough. I thought he was amazing. Did you see when uh, he swapped his shirts with Fabinho at the end of the game? Yeah. And um, when he came back with Fabinho's shirt, one of the coaches said to him, what are you doing? Why are you swapping your debut shirt yeah, I know. Like with anyone? And he ran back to Fabinho and asked for it back. I thought that was a lovely little, yeah. little moment. Because um, you know what? I don't think I would have swapped. Uh, he, he, no, scored a, he, he scored a goal. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, but the thing is, emotions. He, he, was, he was watching all his, his friends swapping shirts with all these world-class footballers and thought, yeah, yeah I'll have I a bit. Will. I'll have a bit of that. Uh, my first up is uh, Paul Pogba. Um, nice. He's been phenomenal since yeah. before Christmas. Um, uh, I just thought it was a tricky tie for United. They obviously they should have won and etc. But um, he's actually done. Uh, he's showing the that he can influence games, uh, and that's what people want. Uh, 
have wanted to see from him for the last two or three years is him dominating and influencing games with the undoubted talent that he's got. He just all too often he gives a four or five out of ten, and yeah. then every five games gives a nine out of ten. But since just the week, I think the week before Christmas or whatever, they'd have you know he's been consistent. He's been the key. I just, I just hope he carries on. I just hope he carries on side personally for him because. I hate it when people say he's, he doesn't care or he's not very good or you know what I mean. He's won the World Cup. He's, he can't be that bad, can he? Yeah, he's, he's technically uh, and ability-wise, he's a quality player. And like, I think that's what frustrates people is that you could see him being like Vieira, that influential, probably better because technically, I think, like from an ability-wise and technique-wise, he's probably better than Vieira in that term. But like as consistency and commitment and 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 like teamwork and all the other things that Vieira brought, he's nowhere near. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, uh, Fernand, Fernandez has had a dip in form, but United have kept winning because largely because of Paul Pogba's influence. So I've criticised him heavily over the last couple of years, mate. And um, we had a little bit of a Barney over him when you said he was a World Cup winner, and I said you can't live on that forever. Um, but yeah, sorry, it, 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 was that a, was that a sorry there? Was it? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> um, second up. <laughs> um, uh, do you know what? I, I can't. I can't go away from this. Tottenham Hotspur fans. Um, yeah. They bought thirty thousand virtual tickets to a game which was live on BBC. So absolutely fair play to them. Um, Ten pound a head. So they made Marine three hundred thousand pounds. Which do you know what? I hope. Absolutely fantastic. All, all the lower league clubs which are left in the in the tournament, I hope they all do it. They yeah, all do, you know do what? virtual games. Brilliant. And everyone just buys them. Yeah, brilliant. Because the FA is not going to help these clubs. So why yeah, don't yeah. just help them yeah. by Fiverr? Yeah, amazing, amazing, mate. You know, like, like, listen, I did think it was quite steep asking uh, £10 for a game which was uh, live on BBC, but... Um, listen, you, you, you're giving you're giving something back because if you were planning on going to the game anyway, it would have cost you fifteen pound yeah. to get in. It would have cost you some food, some drink, a day, travel, petrol, uh, bus journey, train journey, stay in a hotel. So listen, this saves a lot of money and it's cost people ten pound for the privilege and a little bit of a feel good factor as well. So you know what I mean? Fair play to them. You know what I mean? Because. Teams don't have to do that, but it's about giving some back, and it's about the football family sticking together. And yeah, I'm, I was. It made me. Uh, it made me just feel a little bit like proud to be a be a fan of football and the FA Cup. Then so that's what. The, listen, it's a dream. I love the FA Cup. You know, what I mean, I, I know, I, I know, I, I know, I don't hide that fact, but that just make that just makes me like it and love it even more. If you had to wipe one from the existence, so this is like what I do with Kev now. Would you rather wipe from existence the FA Cup? Or Simon Jordan. Oh. Or Bradley Dack. Oh, that's awful. I, I don't that's mean. That's awful. Yeah, you don't. You don't mean. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah. You don't, yeah. Just, just that. Just that. I couldn't talk about any of them ever again. Yeah, you'd never have become aware of them. Um, I'd have to say Simon Jordan, unfortunately, because and, I, and you know how much I love I love Simon. By the way, I, I absolutely adore him. If you're watching, love you, mate. Uh, but um, yeah, FA Cup has been good to me all the way through my career. Loved it as a kid, and uh, Bradley's on my hit list. So. You just said, oh, Dave John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't tell me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my my second up is uh, a joint one. Chris Ma uh, Chris Maxwell and uh, Steele, both goalkeepers, had the dream days. Um, and your downs for the week, mate. What were your downs for the week? Um, well, uh, we have, we obviously haven't spoke we haven't spoke about this, but I think we're, we, we I think our joint one's definitely going to be Bielsa um, because um, I, I think he'd be I think he I think I think he got forty thousand uh, downs from every Leeds fan, so I think he's uh, he's on everyone's hit list this week and not very happy because for me, don't make that many changes, don't disrespect the cup competition, give it the respect and give Crawley the respect they deserve against. Um, Against a decent side who absolutely showed you up on uh, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, yeah, I went with Leeds as well for my first down, but just because I thought um, it's embarrassing from there. Not from uh, in the fact that they are entitled to beat Chorley. I just thought the performance from the players, the team he picked, I think it was all wrong. I just thought it was a bad attitude by some of those players. There was a couple, one or two who 
I don't think we'll ever play for Leeds again. Yeah, I agree. I, I, listen, and, that, that, that and that's, that's a big statement. That's a big statement in itself, but it's it's got to be true, though, because this season, how on earth can he put that player back in that side? I, I don't see how he can do it. Question, can you? Hmm. Um, what's your second down, mate? Um, I know I've gone on about him and I said he was really unlucky, but uh, Andy Carroll, because for me... He had a. He could still be there all day. And he wants to go. You know what I mean. And the difference and the fine margins between winning and losing. And he's he's got the experiences. You know, I mean, every every Newcastle fan, every West Ham fan, um, every Newcastle fan again, second time round, he knows how where the net is, and and he should be doing a little bit better in those kind of situations. And he could have been the catalyst to an unbelievable week for his football club this week. But unfortunately, they've had a really really tough week, and it started with the chances that he missed. Yeah, indefinitely, mate. I think um, my second down is Derby County, not just for the FA Cup, um, but also for just the week they've kind of had with not playing the players and also having the goal to announce Rooney being the manager and his retirement from football. It just makes me, the cynical part of me thinks that that is to distract from the fact that they didn't play their players and staff over Christmas, which is a massive thing over Christmas. So they've kind of end, Rooney's ended his career and got this job. So everyone's focused now on you know Rooney, who's had a phenomenal career, and we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. Like he's had a phenomenal career, and he deserves like a good send off, and he should be right up there with the legends of the game. But the cynical part of me, just like when he signed uh, and the stuff with Bet Three Thirty Two. I just feel like they did that to, to yeah. basically take away from the fact they hadn't paid their players and staff. Um, Gavin said, I'm ignoring his comments. So I'm going to go back through his comments and I'm going to read every single one. And they'll have no context, so they won't make any sense. Uh, he says, "That's not. it's not that easy, Si. He says, Liverpool all day. Really? Liverpool 3-2? It's all about Liverpool, really. <laughs> Superman U fan, he said. He says, well, there you go. Maybe he's not a Liverpool fan. Uh, overrated, lol. Be nice to see you come. Wow, you're blanking my comments now. My heart bleeds. Really, lol? And then he said something else, which I can't repeat. And that's what you get. Now, I'm only playing, Gavin. But, uh, that's what you get to be a Liverpool fan. <clears throat> right. We're going to just finish this off now. You can ask us uh, ask us some questions. I'm going to go back to the questions at the start as well to, uh, to finish off the last 10 minutes or so. Um, Andy Campbell, Championship is back next week, I believe. Yeah. Um, a couple, couple, of, uh, couple of tough games. A couple of tough games this weekend. Middlesbrough playing... Um, Middlesbrough game, yes. Yeah, Middlesbrough play half past 12 tomorrow against Birmingham City at home. Um, uh, what do I think will happen? Uh, it depends if I go with what I think or listening to Neil Warnock on the radio or the TV um, about his comments. So he, he came out with a, a wonderful statement. He said that we've struggled this week to train because of the weather. Right, Middles Middlesbrough have one of the best training facilities you've seen in the UK. They've got a lovely indoor facility. They've been training, by the way. They've got an unbelievable training ground. So they've been doing what they want. But he takes the pressure off his players. Yeah. And he will go into the game tomorrow full of confidence that his players have done everything what they need, everything that work that they want, and they will beat Birmingham City tomorrow. I don't believe Ito will come back to Middlesbrough tomorrow and get anything from, um, from the Riverside. I think it might be Ito's last game if they get stuffed. Um, yeah, if you have, I told you, and at the start of the season, I'd said, right, in the first week of January, or second week of January, um, Cardiff City will be 15th, hovering above relegation. And Middlesbrough will be seventh, a point outside the playoffs. Mm. Don't think you'd have believed me, would you? No, listen, and and the games just don't come any easier. Do they? I look, I looked at the team that Neil put out last Saturday against Nottingham Forest, and I, I thought it was better than I thought he was going to put out. I thought he would have rested a few more players. I thought he would have changed things around a little bit. Yes, he made changes, but I think he made changes because of the way that the results were being been happening, and he was trying to find that formula which is going to get the results and. And then you look at the fixture straight after the game and see that they're playing Norwich City tomorrow. And it's it just goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? You know. And this is Cardiff City all over, though. The Cardiff City will probably go and win tomorrow and everyone will be a little bit surprised and shocked. But um, it's going to be... I think if Cardiff City do win tomorrow, I think every single one of those players need, needs to dedicate it to Sol um, because of, obviously, the news what, what, what came out of the, of the football club this week, especially on Monday. 
Um, uh, I hope he can watch the game from wherever he's watching it from, um, from afar, and, and enjoy it and support the boys and, and give them the push and show that desire that he does and he, and he has done every time he's walked on that pitch with a blue shirt on or a white shirt on or a whatever colour, red shirt on, whatever colour shirt he wore for Cardiff City. Um, and Because, do you know what? Football is, is, is a passion that we've all got. But there's a difference between having a passion and, and, and realising that, that there's a bigger picture in, in, involved in the world and in life. And it's just a game, isn't it, when uh, when you hear the stories about Sol and things. I've read some of the comments and um, amazing how amazing the club's been and, and that they're, they're passing comments on and... Uh, um, and setting up email addresses and, and passing things on and, and and just how much love there is there for a footballer, you know, because um and I mentioned this on the show on Monday that Cardiff have had a Cardiff have had an awful year in terms of um a couple of years. Couple of years. In terms of players players losing their lives, um obviously what happened to Emiliano, um um things like this shouldn't happen to any football club, any person in the world, any person walking life. But to happen to one group of individuals and one club and one family, so to speak, it's so difficult, you know what I mean, to, to gather your thoughts. And, and, and the players won't want this to be an excuse why they're not doing well, you know what I mean? But it always plays on your mind because Sol will be a big character in that changing room and he'll be missed on a match day, especially because from sitting on the bench to talking to players to sitting in the changing room, getting groups of, groups of lads together before a game, after a game. He's a huge individual, a huge person, a huge voice inside that club, regardless if he's playing or not playing. That's not, that's not an issue. Um, and he'll be sorely missed when he's, when he's not able to be there. Yep, most, uh, most definitely will. And I'll, uh, as I mentioned on Monday, I set up a post which I pinned to the top of the Facebook page um, where people can drop messages to Saul Bamber and his family, just offering support. Um, and then I'll pass that on to the, to Cardiff at some point over the next week or two to pass on to Sol. I uh, just thought it'd be something nice if you want to leave a message there. You can if you don't. You don't. It's uh, entirely up to people. There's been a few messages on there already. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can drop that in the comments now, if I can work out to do it. But um, it says pinned to the top of the Facebook page anyway. So crack on, as it were. On, on one memory side, so obviously I, 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 I'm sure I, I mentioned this on Monday's show, but um, when Cardiff City got promoted, which was a, an unbelievable day, by the way, um, on for more reasons than one, um, I got uh, I got I got them given the opportunity to uh, hand Sol his goal of the season trophy for the for the world he, he scored. I think it was at Brentford, was it like a scissor kick or something he scored, oh, and. Yeah. Um, he's just like the nicest man in the world, just so humble, and I'm sat, I'm, I'm I'm giving his award to him as a. Like a, an ex player, and he's just he's just like the nicest guy ever. I just couldn't believe how hmm. how charming he was. So yeah, it was just a, it was a proud moment for me to be able to to be asked by the club to do it. But it just makes it even more special now that, that with what's going on. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. I've heard he's um, he's a proper gentleman, real hmm. real lovely guy, um, which is why I thought you know just setting up that post. Yeah, if you know if people don't want to post on it, that's that's fine. Um, but I just thought it was a way to let him and his family know that people are thinking of him and you know just supporting him and standing with him and etc cetera, etc cetera, which is obviously good um <clears throat> right i'm going to bring up some of these comment, uh, questions from throughout the show now um <clears throat> while i think of it i just wanted to say uh for myself and andy as well a massive thank you to everyone who tuned in and downloaded over the christmas period to the shows specifically um there was one show um where it's just me and andy no guest um and it was viewed by just under ten thousand people on all platforms which was just it's just phenomenal for us because we can see the numbers we can see it growing each week but to, to have numbers like that over christmas for one show was it was just lovely to see it was mm. a big lift and um like towards our plans for this year really kind of kicked us into gear over the last uh, last week and stuff with some mm. ideas and plans and i just wanted to thank everyone for that and of yeah. course um the other shows as well like super kev did a ridiculous amount of audio downloads the other day and we had a lot of fun with that as well as usual but um, so si, uh, it's also uh, one thing that that I, I please ask to, can it carry on is is the amount of interaction we're having between um people viewing because you know it's 
this this for me is why it stands out from from different platforms and different other shows. You know that it's not just about um, two people talking, three people talking on a Monday when we got a guest, or two people talking. It's just me and Si. If it wasn't for you guys, this wouldn't be happening. The, the, the reason we decided to, or the reason Si decided, because Si Si it was Si's wonderful idea, by the way, decided to go live, was to involve everybody. You know what I mean? And involve everybody, and it took. I think it took his time. I think it took a while for people to really get involved. But now everyone else feels a part of it, and for me, if everyone feels a part of it, it takes the pressure off everyone. This 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 time has flew by. What we are now twenty. This now now in twenty minutes ago we started the show, and it feels like I started five minutes ago. Um, the shows are an absolute joy to do when people are interested, intrigued, involved, like you guys are. So please carry on because this is a. Um, it's more of a. It's it's becoming like a like a like a like a little hobby. It's amazing. This is a great thing to do. Yeah, just keep spreading the word and letting people know because um, <clears throat> it's one of those things where. The more people watch, the more it just grows naturally, and and people find it, and um, it's you know, it's very enjoyable. And there's not that many for the championship show specifically. There's not many um, championship shows out there, no. um, which talk about championship football, um, and also there's not many football shows where you can interact live with the people who are doing it and and get involved and have your say there and then. And I like that, and I do try to get. <clears throat> Like I joked a bit with Gavin just now, but I do try to read all the comments and and put the comments up and and stuff like that, or at least refer to them or whatever. Even 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 Leslie gets a mention. Yeah, man. Exactly. He's been on fire. Man. <laughs> Some really good points recently. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I really don't like. He's 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 gone like as if he's like. Uh, he's calmed down, honey. Lockdown's calmed he's him down. Up, he's up his level now. He's like uh, yeah, yeah. He's another level to everyone else. Lockdown's calmed him down. He says. He wants to see the res- he wants to see the uh, the return of uh, the of Barry and the uh, show I used to do with Barry, which is funny because uh, Leslie that show is coming back. Um, it's just coming back under a slightly different format to protect uh, the sponsors, basically. <laughs> yeah. I'll be I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I watched that show religiously every Friday, so I was people loved it, mate. They really I did. did. I, 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 I never stopped I it. Did. Because like there was a problem, other than I just had to, I just had to make sure I had my headphones in when I when I listened to it. Joy watching around my kids, um, yeah. it was just a case of the the like some sponsors and things and me. It's not for everyone, and it's when you're on Facebook and YouTube and you can't control who sees it. Yeah, and it certainly wasn't suitable. Like I wouldn't have been happy if my kids were watching that. Let's just yeah. Say. But, yeah. There's ways and means, mate, and it's coming. The boot and the limp is coming back. <laughs> That's all I can tell you at the moment. Uh, but it's 100% coming back. I've spoken to the boot. It is coming back. Oh, imagine the first show. It's going to be electric, mate. Chaos. Absolute Beautiful. chaos. Chaos. Uh, and, of course, we're Super Kev unscripted on Thursday, mate. Yeah. He's, he, he, he was supposed to be every three weeks. Kev's gone to stay for two weeks, so I'm fully expecting... Well, it'll be uh, every, it is every week. I, we did it last week. We did it last no, week. I did you? Yeah, so it's back to stand a week now. You might get them every day. You might, you might be getting them every day. <laughs> yeah, <I'm a> <laughs> um, if I had my way, me and you would be doing a do show every day. <laughs> of, like, of the drive <laughs> breakfast, breakfast <laughs> show with Kev McNaughton. Drive time show with uh, Andy Campbell. Be phenomenal, mate. But, uh, you know, you never know. Maybe one day we'll just have a radio station. Of all different shows, but there we go. There we go. Right, questions. Let's get to them. Gavin Randall says uh, the Card City phone in. <sighs> Disgraceful mentioning another show on the comment. And they only talk about Cardiff. We talk about all championship teams and all aspects. Plus, we have uh, phenomenal guests. And I'm not criticising them in any way. I like uh, I like all the guys who do that show. Mm-hmm. Now listen, Sai, we we spoke about, didn't we? When when all this begun and we had we had discussions, we we spoke about um what we thought everyone would would like, would want, what we wanted, more importantly, because it was it was putting our names to something. And I think to be to be fair, I think we picked the right originally. Uh, I think we picked the right thing to do originally because we can still talk about Cardiff, we can still talk about Middlesbrough, we can still talk about other teams. Um, and it makes it fair across the board. And nobody, like you say, nobody was doing or isn't doing, not to my knowledge, something similar. So for me, it, 
it gave us the best. Yeah, give us, give us, give it gave us the best of both worlds for me, and gave us a, an opportunity to, to 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 bring something new to everybody, and and then now, interacting, and the way it looks visually, because we've had, uh, we've had plenty of feedback this week, um, people wanting to speak to Sai about um, technology and stuff with with how things visually look, which is just amazing for me, and and, and amazing, which uh, which just gives just gives credit to what um, what Sai's doing, you know. Yeah, so like I've told Andy, um, I've got some friends within um, TalkSport, whether they're presenters or work behind the scenes, and I know for a fact that some of them watch the show. There's people watching our, our shows, whether it's to see, you know, what we're doing or what we're talking about, or whether they maybe they just like it or whatever, who knows. Mm. But I know that there's people watch it, but that's fine, that's cool. Mm. We like what we're doing, we like being in control of it, and we like interacting with the people um okay sorry i was just laughing to myself maniacally right questions let's get to these questions from the start of the show so bankovic gone to belgium apparently right yeah i can't find the questions my comments have all gone out of order so if you sent a question earlier if you want to send them again then please do because for some reason I've lost the load. Um, okay, there was... Oh, that's handy, isn't it? Like, just as we're talking about technology and, like, all my all my comments have been jumbled up. Oh, yeah. K. Charles asks, what's your opinion on the semi-final games being played at Wembley? Not Old Trafford, Villa Park, etc. I liked it when the final was just in Wembley. Yeah, I hate it, that the semi-final was at Wembley. I hate it. It, 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 it. it takes a shine off it for me, you know what I mean? Because if you... It, it, the semi-final just becomes irrelevant because if you lose the semi-final, you've, you've tasted Wembley. So it's it's about going the extra mile. It should be the it should be the final for me, the final and the final only at Wembley. You might as well make the the, the, the semi-finals of the League Cup to go at Wembley as well, then because while we're at it, just make the whole FA Cup, yeah, and just the whole tournament. <laughs> every game, every game, in, every game in the third round plays at Wembley. Starts at nine o'clock and finishes all the way through until Sunday night. Yeah, I agree. Right, I see that. Right. <laughs> who's going to win the FA Cup? Uh, oh gosh. Um, uh, Man City, ABL. I don't know. I just just pick them up. No, I think. Um, I think. That... I was going to say Chelsea. Then you know, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. I don't. I don't. I'll Chelsea. go on Man City. I'll go on Man City. I'm going to go with um... Man City win the treble. Yeah, no, nah, Man United quadruple. Man United going to beat Liverpool to the league on goal difference. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, I think I think actually Liverpool will probably win the league, uh, win the cup rather, uh, or Chelsea. I would like to see someone like Wolves had a really good crack at it. I'd love to see someone like that win it, um, just for a change of pace. I'll tell you who I think's got a great shot at winning the FA Cup is Spurs. Yeah, they um, have, and, and and they have say if they if they continue to play the players that they are, they've, they've got a good opportunity. I think. They've got the best manager in place to win the FA Cup, by the way. So they've, they've got hands there. Mm. Um, do you think Wayne Rooney will be the next manager of Manchester United? Um, no, I know. I think uh, no, not not not, the, not not the next one. No, I think in the future. The, the, in the future, I think I think yes, I think he'll he'll get an opportunity. But I think the next one will come too early because um, even if he has, even if he wins the league with Derby, I don't think he'll get the Man United job because I think it's a, it's a, it's a step above at the minute. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. I think I, I don't see Solskjaer being sacked anytime soon. Certainly not till next season. So I think it'll just unless Solskjaer has like another two years, like this, the rest of this season and all of next season, then maybe I could see him having a chance of getting it. Uh, Kelly says Brentford to win the FA Cup. That is a, that's a great. Yeah, well, to be fair. They could have won the League Cup if they'd have um, put the chances away against Spurs to further the father excellent. So they've got an opportunity. Saying that, I, thought, I watched the game against Middlesbrough on, uh, on Saturday night. I thought they were poor. I thought they were poor. Mm. Uh, Donna says uh, predictions for Liverpool versus Man United. Tomorrow. Is it in tomorrow the, or Sunday? Sunday. Uh, tomorrow, do you mean in the league, Donna, or in the FA Cup? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go the next time to play, which I think is Sunday. Um, I'll go. I think Liverpool are going to win. I just think. I just think Liverpool. Liverpool at Anfield. I've got too much for, for United. But United don't like going there anymore. If Fer, Fergie's not the manager, and Gary Palace is not their squad header. 
Mm. I just think if United if United could ban corners and set pieces, then they'd have a chance. But yeah, so Sunday she said at yeah. some point Liverpool will have a set piece or a corner, which yeah. means they will score at least one goal. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with three one Liverpool. Um, let's have a look. Let's pick some questions. Matthew Angel says, "What's your favourite FA Cup tie you're involved in, Andy?" I've got two, uh, actually. One for Middlesbrough, one, one for Cardiff. Um, my Middlesbrough happened first, so I'll, I'll mention that one. Uh, I scored a, a header against Man United. Um, Man United were just about to go to uh, to Brazil for this uh, World Club Cup uh, when Fergie was a manager and scored a header past Fabian Bartes. So that was um, that was nice. You know what I mean? I've got Fabian Bartes' haircut, haircut now, though. Um, but yeah, I never scored a header because I always used to shut my eyes. So I couldn't really remember much about it. It must have just... Gone ahead off my nose, but it was a nice feeling. One two nil, uh, which was great. And then, um, and then it was Cardiff City when we were in um, League League One. We played against Coventry City from um, uh, from the Championship. We were, I think, we were two nil down, and uh, we got back to to two one. And I think it was in the ninety sixth, ninety seventh minute, and uh, and they managed to score a, a tap in on the line, and and my shirt got ripped. It's the the blue Cardiff City shirt, which I'll I'll have, I'll, I'll get out on Monday. Um, Monday show, uh, and that's kept that shirt from that game because I wasn't obviously able to wear it again um, mm. at all because of the damage it made. But yeah, it was just a, a really good feeling, a nice to. It was just timing. It was just FA Cup was really good to me. I loved it. Every game it just meant something. There was always a, a buzz with supporters and, and and things. So yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, those two memories all do stand out. Even though, even though one memory does stand out, which is a, a bad memory. Um, that when I was um, I was seventeenth man. <laughs> Middlesbrough in the FA Cup final against Chelsea, so um, got told I wasn't on the bench, which yeah brought brought me little heart, bless me. And then um, and then I spat my dummy out a little bit and walked from the tunnel, so didn't see the players in the changing room before the game, and walked up to sit with my mum and dad uh, in the in the stand. And because Wembley, old Wembley was was quite a big place, wasn't it? By the time I, I sat down, obviously Di Matteo scored after like fourteen seconds. And when I sat down, I looked at the scoreboard and seeing Chelsea won Middlesbrough nil, I just Looked up and went. It's that. Have I missed a goal? Have I missed something? Because like, the noise doesn't. It was the, there's noise all over at Wembley. You know what I mean? Just every time you you, you go on the concourse, you think there's a goal because it's just the atmosphere is amazing. But it was just yeah, it was. It wasn't a it wasn't a great day for me personally, uh, uh, professionally. And then uh, and then and then obviously to sit down and realise that Middlesbrough one 0 down, I was gutted because I was I was a fan as well. Yeah, indeed. Um, so just after we uh, praised Leslie's comments recently, he's put this. And see if you could tell me what's wrong with this comment. For the audio listeners, it says 2 2 Liverpool. Yeah, that's 2 2 Liverpool. 2 2 0. 2 2 Liverpool. 2 2 Liverpool. 2 Liverpool. 2 0. Maybe he means Liverpool are going to win 4 0. Does that mean Liverpool? Does that mean Liverpool win a penalty? Will Liverpool win a penalty? It's going to be 0 0. He's saying 2, take away 2. No, he means Liverpool. He means it's 2 2 in the FA Cup and Liverpool win a penalty. Uh, but we're talking about the league game. <laughs> um, Kelly says she's currently watching Cardiff versus Liverpool from the Carling Cup finals. She forgot how well Cardiff did that day. That game was actually one of my favourite games I've ever attended. Um, Good game, that one. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed I watching that. Scored. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I was... Jesus. Oof. Yeah. What a day. But that's what memories. That's what memories are for, sir. You know what I mean? Like, listen, we've all we've all been to Wembley and uh, and and had heart. I never thought I'd see Cardiff City play in a cup final, mate. But it's, that's the fact, and I've seen them play in two. So, yeah, yeah. Like, and listen, I, I've away. been uh, I've been to Middlesbrough. I've been to Middlesbrough watching Middlesbrough Wembley. Um, I first went to watch him against Chelsea in the in the ZDS Cup final when I was a kid. Got beat one 0 Tony Rodriguez scored, gutted. Um, when Emil Heskey scored last minute, obviously told him, and I was sure I didn't like him anymore. That's fine. Um, Di Matteo um, and then Frank Sinclair so uh, listen I think it's me every time I watch Middlesbrough Wembley I've lost I've never seen a win at Wembley the only time Middlesbrough won was at Millennium Stadium so yeah like the Liverpool game no one expected Cardiff to win I didn't expect Cardiff to win but then just like when you get so close and you take it to penalties it's devastating yeah. the Portsmouth game hurts me more because we should have won we yeah. had the back team. We had people like Ramsey and stuff. Even you know, I think where memory serves me correctly, Ramsey. That was the FA Cup on, wasn't it? Yeah. Jones kept Ramsey on the bench for some unknown reason, and Ramsey had been on fire. 
we missed chances. Enkelman made a mistake. And it was just one of those days. Yeah. I've never felt so deflated going out of a football match. It was just so depressing. Um, but yeah, there you know, it is what it is. Uh, right, so Leslie's qualified his quarter. He says, you see, Simon, we'll finish 2-2 the Liverpool game. I've nailed it. Because that makes even less sense. Leslie, next time, just put 2-2. Two, two. Leave it. <laughs> Jesus. Right. Oh, Leslie also asked earlier on, um, I remember, he said, can you tell us who the guest is on Monday? Um, I, I will confirm tomorrow. I just need a bit of confirmation. I'm just, I, I did, I was waiting on the email when I'm just sat. Well, I'm not, we're just sat. I'm in the show, I'm not just sat. I'm a posting. So, <laughs> um, so have I, Donna. So have I. A lot about myself, more than anything, I think. <laughs> A lot about myself Indeed. and how, ex- and how um, excitable I am. And, I'm, and I'm, I think how immature I am as well, by the way. I know I come across quite mature, but I'm like a kid in a sweet shop every every Monday when I get a guest and I think I just sit here just, just waiting for someone to say something. Yes. Well, I, made, I um, what was it? The, uh, Simon, someone asked, Reese, I think it was, asked earlier about uh, could we get Simon Jordan on? I have tweeted him a oh. couple of times over the, the last year or so. Yeah, it was Reese. I'd um, love it. I'd love I, it him a few times saying you know we'd love to get you on or we'd get like to get you on or whatever he never even no he's too busy he's, yeah listen he's too busy uh he's too busy he's slagging too busy, too busy slagging people off on talk spot and it's every time oh, listen Sorry, if you're on about you're on about people's people's twitter feeds and people's twitter accounts simon jordan's twitter is better than donald trump's miles better miles better it's amazing it's amazing i could just read it all day it's just class You tell me, Donna. Mm. You tell me. I, um, I don't know whether I should. <laughs> I don't know whether I should. Uh, <laughs> or not. All I'm all I'm saying is I'm here. Yeah, he's That's here. I'm, I'm here. And I've tried. That's I'm all here. I can say without saying anything further. Kay Venables would be good. Kate, you're right there. Um, Do you know what? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't heard of. I've if not you heard of Terry for, for so long. I might have someone who could know him, actually. Ooh, think um, Harry Man. would know. Harry would know him. Harry would know him. Definitely. I just don't know whether he would... Yeah, maybe. don't know if he'd probably guide him towards Glenn's show now. But well, I can ask him. He's uh, He's been helpful to us before, so who knows. Um, all I can say to people is tweet these people, tag us in it, and tell them to come on the show if they... Yeah. Give any inkling, inkling that they would be interested, we'll be straight in there. Saying that everyone did it at Bradley Zach. <laughs> Bradley got loads of tweets. I loved it. I was re- I was retweeting them all. It was amazing. Just, just issued a restraining order against you. I think so. he, I think he just thinks I'm weird. So I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go do it professionally though. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna get our friend uh, Stewie to just to just just to speak to him. And say, listen. He's de- he's a decent lad. Honestly, he'll look after you. Be quiet with me. <laughs> 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 pass him a note through chat that Andy says yeah will you come and see him right <laughs> when co- I can't wait till Covid's over mate I've got so many plans post Covid it's going to be sensational yeah so it'll be, it'll be hell on it'll be hell on though it'll just be it'll be, 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 be chaos plans the plans the plans um, guys thanks for watching thanks for commenting spread the word help us continue to grow um that's the quickest way for us to grow at the end of the day is word of mouth um obviously the audio version will be out a little bit later or tomorrow morning um any shares of that is always welcome subscribe to the youtube channel most important of all um we'll be back monday 7 30 there's a show on conspiracy theories out on sunday if you'd like and there's also a wrestling show out tomorrow as well um and then we got some top level guests on the football show the fight show on wednesday got some unbelievable guests coming up on there including a current world champion coming up um thanks for the support as usual we love it love it people love it by the looks of it as well which is nice to yeah see. we do which is the more which is which is just pleasing it's just great to uh great to see everyone's support uh keep watching uh every every monday and friday it's uh it's just just so different each show each show is so different so 
really can't wait to um, to keep digging deep. Spot on. And we gave you a little bit longer today as well. Yeah. Um, Treat. Massive, uh, massive thank you as always. Black Diamond Sports, thank you for their support. Bespoke Financial for sponsoring the show. Uh, they specialise in life insurance, critical illness, income protection, mortgages and sports cover. As I mentioned earlier in the show, they're giving a free will away worth £140 with all new uh, orders which are taken up with them. I urge you all to check out what they can offer because uh, they are phenomenal. And um, make sure that when you do phone them, you tell them that you heard about them here. In the meantime, we will see you Monday live. Don't forget to spread the word. Spread the word. Um, what does that say there? Okay, that's, uh, uh, got that as well. Matthew Angel says, great job you're doing, guys. Can't wait for Monday show. Hooked. Okay. Nice. That's what we want. Just want it. Tell your friends. That's the thing. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell them all to join. Uh, yeah, yeah, weeks. well, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll, can, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a, we'll have a special, we'll, we'll do, yeah, we'll do like a special, uh, we'll do a special one time on a Monday, maybe, or, or on a Friday, we'll do a, yeah, we'll do a special, and we'll do a, when we'll um, have, we'll restrictions have, are lifted, mate, we'll do a uh, special, travel freely, um, borough with a camera, yeah, and we'll, we'll do, uh, we'll do a special mini show video, and we'll have a look at your trophies and your mementos, and yeah stuff but in the meantime we'll be back monday don't forget to tell your friends thank you and good night cheers guys my mummy and daddy have been talking about life insurance it sounds like something to protect my brother and me but i don't really understand then my auntie louise told mummy about bespoke financial teaside she said they're a local company who helped her with her life insurance mummy got in touch and because they're based locally a man called darren was able to come to our house he was really friendly. Darren stayed for a cup of tea and made it all really easy to understand. He said that life insurance will protect our home and family if anything bad were to happen. Like if mummy or daddy got sick, then we'd get enough money to take care of us and our house would be paid for so we wouldn't get taken away. After an hour, Darren said goodbye and mummy and daddy seemed a lot happier. Once it was all sorted, we could all relax and watch a film together as a family. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner. I belong, I belong to you. I belong, I belong to you. Do just what you want. You're the one I try.